Well, good afternoon, everybody. I meant to make this video probably Monday, but as you know, here in Nashville, we've got hit by some pretty major tornadoes, and and the neighborhood I live in, here's our uh, neighborhood, and we literally got a 360 degree radius just destroyed around us and left our little patch alone. So thank goodness. But ever since then, it has been nonstop non-stop builds and I've not been able to show off a build or work on other projects except for one and I'm on my last build last one uh, Monday today's what Thursday um that's the last one six I do have a couple starting tomorrow hefty ones let me have Monday I've got a Ryzen 3800X with a RTX 2080 and another one with an RTX 2080 as well, uh, TI, and uh, 3800X as well. But we're going to take a look at Bill's machine, because this is becoming more and more common. And, you know, a normal machine would, you know, that I ship out of here, usually is just enough power for, you know, its entire intended use is going to be strictly for an arcade. It's going to be plug and play ready for whatever controller board you have and so forth. But Bill uh, sent me pictures of his arcade, where he bought it, and uh, it's pretty heavily advertised um, cabinet manufacturer who doesn't quite have the quality of Monster or Rec Room Masters when it comes to a prefab. Actually, quite the opposite. But he does make stuff look good. But I was shocked to find out that inside of these halfway decent looking cabinets you've got Zenmo controllers with a seven dollar joystick and button set you know for seven bucks you should only be able to get a restrictor plate um, so after he sent me the layout of where his cabinet is and his TV and everything Bill's going the route of that most people are going and that's a multi-function machine and so he stepped it up a little bit and it had to be small. And usually small builds are, um, they're a nightmare because my hands are big. But I've never used a Cougar. Uh, this is a cute Cougar Mini ITX CBX case. Now, I was a little worried about um, it being restrictive since um, inside this is a, I believe it's a Gigabyte. Edge X470, maybe a 570, Mini ITX with um, 16 gigs of DDR4 XMP clocked at 3600 megahertz. So you got a 10 terabyte drive with a NVMe 500 gig for his OS. So you got a, a RTX 2070 Super Mini uh, video card with a 140 mil uh, closed. AIO. So I did make him go with water cooling. I was a little worried with all that packed in here. Um, it actually turned out very nice and he's got a ton of room for additional drives. Um, what I do like about the case is it's very well made and um, just, you know, everything just slides off. It looks like a modular case. It's not though. But you know, a normal build will take me maybe an hour for cable management to meet my standards. This guy took about an hour and a half because of my OCD when it comes to cables. I don't like seeing cables at all. I like to make it as clean as possible. Unfortunately, with a build like this, you have to see cables. And so my OCD kicked in and I had to consider the distance it's being traveled, uh, how it's being shipped, and any, you know, if it's gonna be thrown around, and then I had to consider, all right, I want it aesthetically looking like, you know, the manufacturer planned those cables to run that route while keeping an open airflow. Now, I've been running this um, machine on a stress test for, I don't know, eight hours. And the highest yielding temperature yet has been 81 degrees Celsius. And you'll see that each pack of It's got plenty of 
I could add um, in the back, he does have a 80 mil exhaust fan. And I was going to add uh, two more right behind this panel right here. But there's so much open space. I mean, I did a really good job on this now. It took me two hours. But there's so much open space. You have additional two and a half drive bays under here. And you've got a little sneaky one that you could, oh, that you could put right here. Now, this is for a, a slot loading uh, optical drive. But with a $7 adapter. Um, let's see if I got, yeah, I got one. You can turn a slot loading optical drive into a two and a half terabyte, I mean a, a terabyte SSD, which I have laying around here somewhere. I was going to use that for my laptop. So Bill is going to love this rig. Actually, if I had a use for it, I wouldn't mind building one myself. Uh, what I don't like is it, obviously you're going to have to have an open air vent. But you can see right through it. I would like a more uh, finely tuned dust shield or a magnet. But you can get those for a few bucks. And um, so far I'm very impressed with the overall build quality. Um, I've got some pretty massive machines that shipped out this week. I've got one that I built myself for me. And um, that weighs in at a whopping 81 pounds. Now, I've not, what I've been eager to work on is my uh, X put, I mean, um, X, X input to raw uh, GUI interface. Because I've been getting emails about that every single day. Now, since I'm at the end of his build, he's ready to ship out tomorrow. Let's go ahead and boot him up something. I don't know. And I do believe, oh, i tell you what else he did. He decided to get rid of that Zenmo and the cheap. Uh, buttons. He ordered a um, gold leaf RGBs from Ultimark. He got an Ultiman IO, and it's going to be running basically as just an LED blinky setup. And, you know, LED blinky is already set up and configured for him. He will have to create his map. And I'm going to do let's do uh, Sega Ring. Now, right now, he's on the tail end of the 10 terabyte drive. I still have, I don't know, maybe another 500 gigs to test when it comes to the next size drive. But I suspect it's not going to be for a while because I've ran across a ton of system, I mean, games that uh, the RPCS3 emulator is marked as compatible, but it's not. It's um, not even close. Alright, so I'm going to show you guys what's coming up. And I do have, I put out a little teaser just last night. And I was just looking for a couple of people to come in and go, hey, yeah. But I ended up getting seven or eight. Now, we all know what this is. And I, every single day I get um, emails about do I build machines for pinball machines and the answer has always been no because of the complication due to um, whatever hardware you may have or want and it's really hard to pre-configure that and over the last few months i got an idea about i don't know about four months ago so i ordered a lot of parts and somebody here recently just um pushed me over the edge even a little bit further too i went ahead and got uh, the solenoids Another pack lead, uh, DMD, the topper. So I'm to the point now where I do have a working, fully just ready to roll uh, pinup popper setup. Now, the way that uh, I am setting these up is um, you're not actually getting the popper software from me. The Everything else is um, already set up and sitting in a cache. Uh, right before I made this video, I had a have another drive right here somewhere that has my original drive on it. And I imaged the new drive 
with the script. Now it booted up with a fresh version of Windows 10 Pro 64 bit, which does include a legitimate COA and that is tied to your machine, by the way. Um, DOF, Freezy, Ultra DMD, D2 server back glass. Everything is already configured and ready to roll. That includes virtual pinball, uh, visual pinball, FX2, FX3, the whole gamut. With, um, whenever you first boot up, the very first thing it's gonna do is go download the very latest version of Pinup Popper. It's going to integrate that into the existing setup. It's basically a placeholder. Just to ensure you always have the latest. It, and each drive is tied into a cloud-based system, which I will talk about later. I have those people testing it, but I'll just say that everybody that's content here, none of it I went out and searched for. I wrote a scraper a long time ago that basically just runs the gamut across all the pinball machine, all the pinball sites, because you're having to scour several different sites just looking for something that interests you. And so I've got a couple dedicated servers and several cloud services and so you know what let's take advantage of that and I haven't touched PHP in a long time and I figured this is a good chance to learn Python and so let's create a scraper in Python and over the course of a couple of months it was really doing its job so at the end of every week it'll give me a breakdown of what it's found and it'll put it in a sort folder and that sort folder is just a bunch of files however it does tag the uh, original posted author, the site it came from, and uh, the date. At the end of the week, I'll just hit approve, 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 approve. Or I'll just nix it. Um, right now, I ended up right around two terabytes of content. And um, I'm using that as an open global just repository for you know who my builds because I want I don't want to separate you from the pinup community. As a matter of fact, I want you to get involved in it. But a lot of people, including myself, got a bit intimidated. This is my fourth cabinet. And this is the one I said, you know what, I'm really going to dig in on. And I'm very surprised to see that um, this is the... Um, I've tested it countless times on virtual machines. It's probably the seventh or eighth time I've imaged this machine and booted up and within 10 minutes it's already back up to uh, the latest state. Now just to show you, I'll go over to let's go to uh, Visual Pinball X. Um, I love Beach Park. Right. Okay. You've seen that that uh, B2 server back glass is running. You've got uh, Freezy in the background. There it goes. The DMD right now, whenever I was moving it around earlier, uh, I stripped the head off my DM, uh, my uh, HDMI. So, uh, oh, wait, I don't have my, uh, my script running. I'm the only person with that. That's a ten dollar plunger that I am running um, a cheap joystick encoder. Okay. And so there it is. You don't have to waste tons of time. But I will tell you that you should probably. Um, probably dig in and you know use this as a starting point because I know a lot and trust me a lot of people are wanting a cabinet but they don't have the technical expertise to really get started or are looking for another hobby and that's one thing about the pinball community is um, it may start right here like underneath I've got four uh, shakers. I've got a ten, an eight-inch sub. I've got uh, an Alpine four-channel amp. Um, uh, two, uh, four solenoids. Uh, is it a Saint? Some. Uh, no, I got a Teensy and a Saint board. 
None of that sticks out. Um, just because, honestly, I didn't feel like it. Uh, I wanted to uh, just have a board that my wife and kids can play. And that's what a lot of people want to do. And I wanted to get them there without the intimidation. So it's taken me a long time to get there. But I'm very proud of it. Um, but I would definitely use that as a starting point because I've seen several customers, and I do mean several, that are now creating pup packs and doing some really amazing work. And so the the overall quality of everything is just phenomenal. It took me some frustrating hair pulling, but um, I'm just like the arcade setup, I'm very I'm glad I dug in. So... Guys, there it is. As soon as I finish the uh, keyboard, the um, yeah, X input to, uh, I'm sorry, keyboard to X input, which I just got to pick up just a few minutes ago and forgot that all I did was just add a couple classes. So I didn't, didn't even create the objects, I just added the classes. That's how busy I've been. I haven't even been able to document over um, a terabyte of uh, uh, updates. And there's just a lot I haven't been able to do because I've just been so busy. And hopefully I can get caught up. So I am very eager to finish this. Just because it's a challenge. And I did see a couple of control mappers that were written for the old VJoy in AHK. Um, that have been ported to C-sharp that I sort of went on a little feature creep tangent. I had to stop myself because this was getting way out of control. Um, if I sit down, I should be able to have this down within a couple hours. And this is where you can just point, click, and have a game initialize. Turn your keyboard instantly into Xbox controllers for that PC game. And the second you exit, take it back. That's whether you're running Rocket Launcher or straight LaunchBox. I can't even imagine running an arcade without Rocket Launcher. But um, people are intimidated by its, its feature set. You know that there are still some very talented developers over there. And actually, there's a few over there that are keeping up with the modules. And um, they're doing a great job doing so. So if you gave up on Rocket Launcher a while back, uh, you might want to head back over to our launcher. I think with a little bit of, um, just at a glance, you might be steered back to, you know, the amazing feature set it offers. Plus, I never want to see it die. And, you know. All right, guys, I'm going to go eat and start back on this. You guys have a great night, and we'll see you soon.